On the 5th of June 2009, a deadly fire broke out at the ABC daycare centre in Hermosillo, Mexico. The disaster had a profound impact not only on the families of the victims, but the whole of Hermosillo and the world. The tragedy sparked a wave of grief and outrage, with protests and rallies demanding justice and greater accountability from those responsible, justice that many of the families are still seeking to this day. As investigations into the incident unfolded, it became clear that the daycare owners were in violation of numerous safety regulations, and government officials were criticised for their lax enforcement of said regulations. This is the infamous Hermosillo daycare fire of 2009. The ABC Child Care Centre in Hermosillo, Mexico, was a private establishment that had been in operation for a number of years before the year 2009. The daycare was privately run, but received federal funding and was set up to provide childcare services to working class families in the area. One of the owners, Marcia Gomez del Campo, was well known in the community and she had strong political ties. She was the cousin of First Lady Margarita Zavala. The daycare was situated in a warehouse style structure that had been divided into different rooms to accommodate kids of various ages. The building was not originally intended to serve as a daycare facility. The days leading up to the fire were typical for the facility, with parents dropping off their children as usual for a day of supervised care and education. However, there were some issues with the facility in the months leading up to the tragedy. According to reports, the daycare centre had been subjected to numerous complaints from parents and former employees regarding its safety and operating practices. The complaints included allegations of overcrowding, poor hygiene and inadequate staff training. A few weeks prior, a safety inspection was carried out and the building was deemed safe by officials. Despite the issues I just listed off, the facility remained open and continued to provide childcare services to families within the area. On the day of the fire, it was a typical day at the daycare centre, with children engaged in various activities, unsuspecting of the horror that was about to commence. That fateful day was Friday the 5th of June 2009. 142 children were in the building at the time and they were being supervised by only six adults. At approximately three o'clock in the afternoon, a small blaze started in a warehouse next to the daycare centre, which was operated by the state government. The fire quickly spread throughout the building and spread quickly due to things like foam padding in the play area. Within five minutes, the fire engulfed the entire structure with many of the children trapped inside. Smoke filled the air, and the roof then collapsed in, killing some of those inside instantly. The first responders arrived at the scene within minutes of the fire breaking out, and they immediately began rescue operations to evacuate children from the burning building. The rescue mission was anything but easy. There were no emergency exits in the nursery, no sprinkler system, and no fire extinguishers, which only made the fire spread further in a quicker time. As there was only one exit, Firefighters had to knock holes into the wall to get children out. One father even rammed his pickup truck through the wall to get his children out. As you can imagine, inside the nursery was complete chaos. Children were scared and had no idea what was going on. Some children were able to escape on their own accord, but many of the smallest who were still in cribs were trapped inside. The confusion surrounding the number of children trapped inside also hampered rescue efforts. In the chaos of the fire, it was difficult to determine exactly how many children were in the daycare centre at the time. This made the jobs of the firefighters even more difficult. A staff member at the daycare stated, We began to smell smoke and the alarm went off, but it was explosive and there was no chance to get more children out. The staff were not properly trained for the emergency of a fire. Despite the heroic efforts of the general public and firefighters, the fire was difficult to control. It took two hours for them to calm it down. The children who made it out were rushed to nearby hospitals. Tragically, the fire resulted in the deaths of 49 children and over 100 others were injured. Deaths occurred from smoke inhalation, burns and trauma from the roof collapse. The 49 victims were all between the ages of 5 months and 5 years. Although there have been many different reports into how the fire started, the investigation found that it was caused by a short circuit in a neighbouring building's air conditioning system. The air conditioner in the government building 
melted its aluminium housing, which spread to the license place and paperwork. No one was able to stop it because the building was empty at the time. Within minutes of the fire starting, the daycare was filled with smoke, but alarms within the daycare were faulty and took too long to alert staff. The centre also lacked water sprinklers, which could have automatically activated in the events of a fire, and fire alarms were not installed correctly. Families were outraged. How could this happen? The tragedy of the ABC daycare centre sparked widespread public outrage and led to protests and demands for justice. The families of the victims, along with advocacy groups, called for accountability and reforms to prevent similar tragedies from occurring in the future. Seven workers in the warehouse that the fire started were arrested, along with the three owners of the daycare. All of these were later released. According to initial reports, in 2005, the government claimed that they told the daycare owners that their building wasn't fire regulated and it needed to be changed. In 2016, it came to light that the claims from the government had been falsified. This was to divert attention away from the fact that it was a government building that the fire started in. This sparked anger with many people, believing that the fire was intentionally started to destroy government documents. After the fire, even though investigations found the fire was caused by negligence in the management team, Marcia Del Campo was exonerated of all charges. This was due to her cousin, Margarita Zavala, being the first lady at the time. Margarita pulled some strings behind the scenes and her relative was released for the crime. She has since denied these allegations, but Marcia remains free to this day and this continues to stir controversy in Mexico. Families have continued to fight for justice and in 2018 received some form of hope. Mexican President André Abrador, who took office in December 2018, promised to act on behalf of the children and their families. His administration reopened the investigation into the fire and restored health services to survivors and victims' families. In 2019, a federal judge sentenced 19 of 22 people involved in the fire that killed the 49 children, and their sentences ranged from 20 to 29 years. This included the owner of the warehouse where the fire started. In 2021, the court upheld the convictions of the 19 people in connection with the fire, and also ruled that three previously acquitted women were also guilty of negligence, but this did not include Marcia. However, the sentences of the 19 people found guilty were all reduced, with some receiving only four years. The family members of the victims claim the ruling is far from the justice their children so rightfully deserve. This incident continues to stir controversy in Mexico to this day, and a march is held on the anniversary by members of the public and the victims' families each year, because these children deserve justice, and this fire should never be forgotten. Thank you for watching.